Well everyone, today's the day you'll be able to update your Apple Watch to watchOS 26 and in my opinion of these 26 updates, it's one of the most underrated because you are getting the brand new liquid glass design, you're getting the new workout buddy, you're getting the new enhancements to the sleep tracking with the sleep score and a brand new application that's never been made for the Apple Watch. So without further ado, let's talk about all the changes you're going to get with watchOS 26 on your Apple Watch. Let's get into it. But now, before we continue, if you enjoy videos like this one where we keep you up to date on all things Apple, consider subscribing. But now, let's find out which Apple Watches are getting support for watchOS 26. So now, watchOS 26 is coming to a bunch more Apple Watches than we originally anticipated, starting all the way back to the Apple Watch SE 2, then all the way back to the Apple Watch Series 6, which is like a six-year-old Apple Watch now at this point absolutely insane and then every single apple watch ultra which is not that big of a deal there's a couple of little features like the hypertension feature that is only available on certain apple watches but even the new sleep score which was just announced at the latest apple event will be available on the apple watch series 6 but now let's actually get into what's new so for reference and for context i'm using an apple watch ultra 2 the black one so i probably have the latest and greatest and the best one to run something like watch os 26 but the first thing you notice here is that new design it did come over. Now it's not as obvious as it is on something like iOS, iPadOS, or even macOS, but the liquid glass design is there. You can see that we have the bubbling of the actual clock there or the time. You can see that it is hiding behind the ear of my dog. And then if I pull up something like the new widgets, it's also there. The glass-like design, it is subtle, but it is there nonetheless. And then also you really start to notice it if you go into your notifications. Your notifications do have that glass-like design which is coming over from iOS and iPadOS as well as macOS. And these photos that you're seeing here is the new design or home screen for the Apple Watch, which is going to be the new kind of hiding behind the lock screen or the actual time hiding behind. And what's cool is if I flick my wrist really quick, it brings up a new photo. So you can see that there's my dog, flick my wrist again. As you can see, if I continue to flick my wrist, it does keep doing that. <laughs> there's my dog again. So the clock does hide behind certain aspects, certain subjects when it comes to using this with people if you want to do that as well. So the new UI is nice. It's a nice added change. Nothing functionally different, but overall something that I welcome. Something else you might notice that was brought over from iOS is that when you tap in to these buttons, you actually get something a little bit different. You get to be able to see that you are pushing in on the screen like you do on here. So if you look real closely, you can see that there's a little bit of the animation showing that. And another great indication of the glass-like UI or the liquid glass is in the control center. The control center is probably the one that looks the most like liquid glass when it comes to comparing it to iOS. You do get the new animations, the new design overall for the UI, and liquid glass is here on the Apple Watch. And you get the new flick gesture, which will change the wallpapers if you have shuffle on, but it's also there to dismiss notifications while you're running, dismiss notifications in any situation. So it kind of replaces the, when you have to face palm it down to kind of turn off any notifications. So for me, the biggest update has to be in the workout application, because again, I consider myself a casual runner. I like to track all my workouts, see how I'm doing. And this is going to be the biggest added bonus to watchOS 26. And it's going to be the new changes to what this all looks like. So you can see that if you are running something like watchOS 11 or whatever the previous one was, this looks relatively different. It's not in cards anymore. They take up the entire screen. So it is a full screen design and you can kind of go through them. Of course, you can use your double tap if you have the right Apple Watch for that to continue and scrolling through all the different workouts. And you have a couple other options, right? So you can see that first off, your most recent one or your most used workout will always show up at the top which is gonna be my outdoor run. And then you have some new icons on all the corners. So this top left corner, if you open this up, it lets you change up the workout views. So during your workout, turn the digital crown to see your workout views, which again is very similar to what we've seen before, but now you can actually customize it on a per page basis and you can include or exclude certain pages if it's something that you don't really care about. So for instance, if you don't really care about this section right here, which is gonna be the second level of metrics, you can just exclude it altogether by toggling it off and you can just go through all these to see exactly which one you would want to add. Then on the top right hand corner, you have a little timer. So it lets you put goals together. So you have your categories, you have three goals, so a 30 minute, a distance and a calorie goal, depending on what you want your workout to be. Custom goals, you have a pacer, you have your race route. So these are all ways to kind of go back and see what you've been doing. So if you want to compete against yourself, this feature was here before, but it was a little harder to actually access. And now it's kind of right there for you if you do want to go about competing with yourself or running any of these other type of time-based or goal-based kind of metrics when you are competing against yourself. Then you also have the alert button right here. So this is going to be the workout buddy. This is going to be the newest addition to Apple Watch and watchOS 26. And again, it's nothing revolutionary in terms of what's happening. And we've had something like this before where Siri would just kind of talk to you and let you know like, hey, you, you ran a mile. This is what your time is. But now it's a little bit more 
the way that I'm describing it is, again, it's a buddy. It's a little bit more conversational. They use a synthesized voice apparently. So if I go in here, you can actually download different workout buddy voices. There's only two right now, but it says get personalized encouragement and your data from a synthesized voice during your workouts. So it does sound like a natural voice and they are kind of reiterating and grabbing data from what's going on around you and all your workout data. So for instance, when I turned it on the other day, I started my run, I was about three, four minutes into my run. Then the workout buddy came on and told me, hey, congratulations on your hundredth mile ran this year. Continue with the good work. So again, it's all about kind of encouragement and improving and it pulls data from previous runs and previous things you've been doing. Not only that, but it also takes into account all the applications that are running in the background even if they aren't first party applications. So for instance, you know, I like to listen to podcasts or music, but I use Spotify or YouTube to listen to those things when I am running. So once it gives me an alert, so let's say I ran one mile, lets me know like, hey, this is your mile time, this is your pace, this is your heart rate. Now enjoy listening to X, Y, and Z from Spotify or, or continue listening to your podcast nine to five back over time in order to continue your run. So it pulls that data and also gives you context of what's going on. So it knows that you're listening to that kind of stuff which I think just adds an extra level of personalization and an extra level of just comfort when you are using something like the Workout Buddy. So I've been a big fan of Workout Buddy and I didn't think that I would like it or really care for it, but now it feels weird not to have that person talk to me or you know that assistant talking to you when you are working out to get a little bit more on there. And again, you can kind of customize this to however you see fit. So you can get alerts based on heart rate, your cadence, power, time intervals, split intervals, your different laps if you're running outside on a track, and again, you can get targeted alerts. During outdoor run custom workouts, you will receive an alert for any targets that you may apply during that interval. So again, that's gonna be the UI for the workout buddy. And then lastly, over here, you have the ability to control your music for auto playing media. So automatically play media when you start outdoor run workouts, unless media is already playing. I'll leave that turned off because I don't want it to go into Apple Music since I don't use Apple Music. And now there are two new features that weren't part of the original beta program that Apple most recently announced during their latest event. And that has to be the sleep score and then hypertension alerts. The sleep score is a great one because we got sleep tracking a couple years ago on the Apple Watch and it was great because we got to understand our REM cycle, the stages of sleep, how long we slept, how little we slept, how it correlates to your heart rate and things like that. But now we're getting an actual tangible sleep score. Before we were only able to kind of see the data, we couldn't really analyze it to understand what was going on. Now we get a sleep score out of 100 to see if we got a good night's sleep or a bad night's sleep. And that's gonna be available to all the Apple Watches from the Series 6 and newer. And then you have the hypertension alerts. To clarify, this isn't going to be a medical grade kind of blood pressure monitor. If you do need one of those, go get a separate piece of hardware to get that done. This is gonna use the current sensors on the Apple Watches and use their formulas and algorithms to understand if you have hypertension or not. So if you do have hypertension, you will get an alert on this. And this is gonna be great for a lot of people moving forward but it is only available for the Apple Watch Series 9 and newer, and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and newer. So it's not gonna be available on the regular Apple Watch, which is a shame. I haven't been personally able to kind of turn it on or see what that's like, but it is here for watchOS 26, which is a great new feature to have. But now let's get into a couple of new things that I wanted to bring up, and that's gonna be this new hint widget or this new smart stack hints. So whenever you pull up your smart stack, it's gonna give you the most relevant one in the moment. I also love the new UI here for the smart stacks with that kind of bubble clock but it pretty much brings the first widget that you should know about up to the forefront. So for instance, I am planning on going on a run later today, but there is a severe heat warning, so I might reconsider, or maybe I'll run inside on the treadmill so I don't pass out while I'm running around. So that's something cool to consider. And then also you'll get a little bubble, which I'll put some B-roll on over, when you are actively using certain things. So if you are running, you'll get a little running bubble to bring that to the forefront. When you're using the camera on your iPhone, the little remote camera icon will show up down there. You can tap on and then open up that application. So giving these little hints in the smart stack just adds to the usability and adds to the efficiency overall of watchOS 26. And then we, like I said, we got a new application. So if we go into our list, we got the brand new notes application that came over to watchOS. Again, I don't really see a need to have the watch application or the notes application in the watch app, maybe for some voice notes or for some quick voice memos and things like that. But Again, it's on there and it syncs with your different Apple devices. So your latest stuff will be on here if you want to do that. And then you can also start a new note. And I believe you can type or handwrite the same way that you would text. So it is there if you do want to use it. I don't see myself using this too often, if at all. But let me know in the comment down below if you're going to be using the notes application and how you would use it. And then you also have live translations, which happen the same way that would in the iMessage app. So all those different things that came over to iMessage are now available on the Apple Watch with watchOS 26, like the live translation, 
as well as like the pulls and the backgrounds and things like that. So that's always good to know. So for example, if I pull up, let's see if this works in real time. You can see that in this conversation, there is a background, right? This is a football conversation. I have a football player in the background, which is something that I added. So all that stuff is going to be readily available in iMessage or in the Messages app on watchOS 26 as well, which is good to know for those people that really use this to message a lot, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't really text through my Apple Watch at all. My Apple Watch is mostly there for workouts and notifications. And then lastly, the watch application on your phone got a nice little revamp and an update to match liquid glass. And it also looks a little bit different when you are kind of playing with the different wallpapers, the exclusive wallpapers to watchOS 26, and the exclusive wallpapers and setups for your Apple Watch Ultra, which is always great to see. A nice little revamp makes it feel like it's a brand new kind of device overall. So that was just about to do for this video, everybody. Like you saw, watchOS 26 wasn't a revolutionary change by any means, but it was a great quality of life update. It improved on all the things that were already pretty good, especially with the workout buddy. I think that's gonna go a little bit under the radar. It is very motivating. I do enjoy it. It's something that I've been using every day and I like to turn it on, which is great to see. And then also the sleep score. That sleep score, for some reason, I like to have a tangible number to analyze and understand, all right, I know that I got a 90 out of 100. How do I get to 100 if I can actually, or want to actually get to 100 with my sleep score? Whereas before, it would just give me the data. Some people might say that gamifying your sleep is probably not a good thing, depending on who you are. But for me, having some sort of tangible number to continuously compare it to, I think is a net positive. But that'll do for this video, everybody. Leave a comment down below what your favorite feature of watchOS 26 is. Which Apple Watch do you have? Are you updating to the new watchOS 26? Are you getting a new Apple Watch when they release on Friday to be able to get watchOS 26? All things I'm curious to know, and I'll have the best Apple Watch deals linked down below if you guys are in the market for one. But that'll do it, everybody. If you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, check out one of these videos right here. Until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace, everyone.